Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about the plantar surface uh, anatomical structures uh, because that's where we're going into dissection, uh, where some of you actually may be currently. So what we're going to talk about are the anatomical structures that lie on the plantar surface of the foot and maybe their importance um, and kind of role in support of the foot and of the human body. So the first thing you guys are going to do in the lab is you're going to create these skin flaps on the plantar surface of the foot. You're going to transect and then reflect those skin flaps. And then the first anatomical structure that you're going to come to is going to be what most of you call the plantar fascia. So this structure here. However, what I've learned over many years of teaching this course is that the plantar fascia really kind of is really three distinct anatomical structures. Um, and so the first anatomical structure that makes up the plantar fascia is what we know as the lateral plantar fascia. Second structure is this most centralized structure, probably the densest thickest portion of the entire plantar fascia, which is called the plantar aponeurosis. And then last but not least is the what we call medial plantar fascia. Each of these three components really make up three compartments or the three compartments of the plantar surface of the foot. We just left the crural compartments, right? And so we learned that there was a lateral crural compartment, an anterior crural compartment, and a deep and a superficial posterior compartment. Well, the same kind of applies for the plantar surface of the foot. We have this lateral compartment, the central compartment, and this medial compartment. And each of these compartments, just like the crural compartments, house or contain different muscles in the plantar surface of the foot. So what we know about the lateral and medial plantar fascia is that they're the weakest uh, tissue structures of the entire plantar fascia. Uh, and so we'll start with lateral plantar fascia first. The lateral plantar fascia um, is going to contain the abductor and flexor digiti minimi muscles. Okay, and then your central slip is going to contain many of the muscles of uh, the, the plantar surface of the foot. So the flexor digitorum brevis, the tendons of the flexor hallucis longus, and flexor digitorum longus. It's also going to contain the quadratus planti, the lumbricals, and then last but not least, the adductor hallucis. Um, what you get medially is you get the muscles of the abductor hallucis, abductor hallucis, the flexor hallucis brevis, and the tendon of the flexor hallucis longus, along with the medial um, plantar nerve and vessels being housed in the medial plantar fascia. So we can kind of see that these are major compartments in the plantar surface of the foot. While most of uh, the pathologies that plague the plantar surface of the foot occur to the central uh, slip of the plantar fascia, we just want to make sure that we are calling this what it truly is, and this structure right here is the plantar aponeurosis. So as a whole, you know, the major role of the plantar fascia as a whole really is to provide structural integrity and support to the plantar surface of the foot, specifically in the mid stance phase of gait when that patient is kind of getting ready to lean over the foot and getting ready to go into the swing phase of gait. In other words, plays a major role in um, bearing the load of the weight when the weight is over the foot. Um, and so when injury or compromise occurs to the plantar fascia, then what we see is a patient who may not be able to bear um, the majority of the weight in, in the foot. So it is a, a majorly important anatomical structure as are both the lateral and medial plantar fascia. However, that central slip, which is very thick and very dense, probably plays the majority of the role in terms of um, load and weight distribution. One other thing about the, the plantar aponeurosa um, is that it kind of arises posteriorly right from the calcaneus and really has this um, attachment to the medial calcaneal tubercle of the calcaneus. And so we can kind of see its attachment here on the actual calcaneus. And then what's interesting about the plantar fascia is that it travels right um, to the uh, toe region or metatarsal phalangeal joint region where it then kind of is combined or held together by these transverse metatarsal ligaments. And so it's tendinous slips into each of the um, phalanges. And then in addition to that, it's brought together by this, meta, uh, this transverse metatarsal um, ligament, which kind of holds all five of those plantar fascia, plantar, plantar fascia strips 
in, in place. And so that's the plantar fascia, right? So it really, it's not the first layer of muscle, but it is the first layer on the plantar surface of the foot. So please don't mistake that for me saying it's the first layer of muscles. It's not, it's a protective layer. Um, and so when we transect and reflect the plantar fascia away, then what we get into are the four intrinsic layers of the plantar surface of the foot, which we're going to talk about next. Okay, guys, so after you've transected and reflected the plantar fascia, um, then you basically expose the muscles in the plantar surface of the foot. And as we've already talked about in your homework assignment alluded to, there are four distinct layers of muscles on the plantar surface of the foot. And so we're going to kind of take a look at those muscles um, by layer. The first layer um, of muscles, um, it's comprised of three. Um, and the first muscle that it's comprised of is the abductor hallucis. We have the uh, flexor digitorum brevis. So we have the tendons of that muscle. And then we also have the muscle belly of that muscle. And then last but not least on the lateral side, we have the abductor digiti minimi. The abductor hallucis is responsible for abduction of the first ray. The abductor digiti minimi is responsible for abduction of the fifth ray. And then the flexor digitorum brevis is responsible for flexion of digits two through five. So as a whole, this layer will help abduct um, the first and fifth ray, and then also uh, help or assist with toe flexion of digits two through five. Uh, the second layer of muscles is relatively easy to remember uh, because the reality is there's only two muscles in that particular um, layer. The first muscle is the quadratus planti. The quadratus planti has a proximal attachment to the calcaneus um, on both the lateral side of the calcaneus and the medial side. So this is the quadratus planti. One thing about this particular depiction of the muscle muscular layers on the plantar surface of the foot is you won't be able to see the most distal attachment to the pro, uh, quadratus planti and that's because it lies deep to to the lumbricals and so essentially the quadratus attaches distally via the tendon for the flexor digitorum longus so again we can see its proximal attachment on the calcaneus however we won't see it uh, distally as it um, attaches to the tendinous slips of the flexor digitorum longus the second muscle in the second layer of muscles um, on the plantar surface of the foot are the lumbricals so lumbrical lumbrical, lumbrical, lumbrical. They are named by number. Um, so this would be lumbrical number one, lumbrical number two, lumbrical number three, and then lumbrical number four. The lumbricals of the toes um, or of the foot kind of do two different things. They assist in flexion of the proximal phalanges for two through five. And then last but not least, they assist in um, extension of the middle and distal phalanx of digits two through five. So two different actions. They assist in uh, flexion of the proximal phalange, but then they also help in uh, extension of the distal um, and middle phalanx of digits two through five. So two muscles in the second layer, your quadratus planti, and then your lumbricals, lumbrical number one, lumbrical number two, lumbrical number three, and then lumbrical number four. As we move to the third layer of the foot, we all, we have uh, three different muscles in the third layer. So again, it should be relatively easy to, to remember. The first layer uh, or the first muscle in the third layer of the foot uh, is what we would call the uh, flexor hallucis brevis. So this is the flexor hallucis brevis here. Major role as the name implies is flexion of the proximal portion of the, the hallux um, bone. So aids in first metatarsal flexion. The second muscle that we have is the adductor hallucis muscle. So I'm gonna highlight, highlight that for you first because there are two different portions to the adductor hallucis muscle. The first portion is what we call the oblique head. So this is the oblique head. And then the second head is the transverse head. Overall, the transverse head is really going to kind of assist in toe um, uh, or first digit a deduction. And then that oblique head is kind of going to help 
support the medial longitudinal um, arch of the foot. So we have two heads. The first head is the oblique head. Second head is the transverse head. Transverse head is going to help with a de-adduction of the, of the hallux. And then that second head, the um, oblique head, is going to assist with medial longitudinal arch um, stability of the foot. And then the third muscle in the third layer is what is called the flexor digiti minimi brevis. So this little guy right there. The flexor digiti minimi brevis major role is to um, kind of flex the proximal phalanx of the fifth ray and assist with flexion essentially of the fifth ray as well. So if we remove the drawings from um, this particular specimen, again, we have the flexor hallucis brevis, we have the oblique head of the adductor hallux, we have the um, transverse head of the adductor hallucis muscle, and then last but not least, we have the flexor digiti minimi brevis. This aids in helping the hallux ad duct, this helps the uh, hallux flex, and then this helps the fifth metatarsal flex. Um, and so those are the three muscles in the third layer of the foot. And then last but definitely not least is the fourth layer of the foot. And the fourth layer of the foot is composed of the plantar inner ossi and then the dorsal inner ossi. So I'm going to kind of remove uh, some of these muscles so you can see them. So what we have, um, maybe I'll add one, one layer back in. What we have, um, and I'm going to use the pins to kind of help drive this, uh, what we have are two really special muscles on the plantar surface of the foot. So if we can kind of look at this from a lateral and medial perspective, um, when we highlight this, what we see is on each lateral metatarsal. So uh, we have what we call dorsal inner rossi. Okay, so, um, oh, come on, work. There it is. So the first dorsal inner rossi is on the medial um, proximal phalange um, of the first ray. And then the second dorsal inner ossi is on the lateral second proximal phalange. And then from there, um, all of the dorsal inner ossi sit on the lateral aspect of the first or the proximal uh, phalange, if that makes sense to you. So First inner ossi is going to be medial second proximal. Second is going to be lateral second proximal. The third inner ossi is going to be on the third ray of the proximal phalangeal, phalange laterally. And then that fourth inner ossi, dorsal inner ossi, is going to be on the fourth ray and laterally situated. So ultimately what we can say about the dorsal inner ossi or this right here, I'm going to highlight them first. So we've got first dorsal inner ossi, second dorsal inner ossi. Um, we have, let's take that off. You have um, third dorsal inner ossi and fourth dorsal inner ossi. What we can say about them is that they're distal attachments. The first dorsal inner ossi, medial side of the proximal phalanx of the second digit. And then the second through fourth dorsal inner ossi, all attached to the lateral sides of the second through fourth digits. Their major role, dorsal inner ossi, is to assist in abduction. And that kind of would make sense, right? Um, this idea that they're all really, with the exception of the first inner ossi, they're all attaching to that lateral portion of the phalanx would make sense that they're going to then essentially drive abduction of that particular ray, right? Makes sense, okay? And the reason we don't have an inner ossi on the first metatarsal or the fifth is because if you remember in our first layer of the foot, we have the abductor hallucis and then the ab um, ductor digiti minimi, which assist in rays one through and five abduction. So those dorsal inner ossi really are helping assist um, with two, three, and four digit abduction. Hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. 
Also in the fourth layer of the foot, we have the plantar interossi. And the plantar interossi kind of are on the opposite side of the dorsal interossi. Um, and um, they assist with toe a deduction because they sit on the medial side. So with the plantar interossi muscles, what you will kind of see in just a second um, is that they sit on the medial side. So, and so let's go, where are you plantar interossi? Uh, and so this is just one example of, of the plantar interossi, okay? The plantar interossi, um, sit right here. So this is the second interossi, okay? Uh, plantar interossi, this would be the first plantar interossi. And then last but not least would be the third interossi of the foot. And, and their major role, again, is to assist in toe A deduction. So proximal attachment for plantar interossi would be bases and medial sides of the metatarsals three through five. And then the distal attachment would be the base of the phalanges of digits three through five. Major role, again, is to assist in a deduction of digits three through five. So keep in mind where your dorsal interossi does not assist in um, a deduction of the fifth ray, your plantar interossi are actually going to cause a deduction of the fifth metatarsal. I uh, hope that makes sense to you guys. If not, please ask for clarity in class. I'm gonna put all the layers of the foot back on um, this image. And what I want you to take away from this is that there are four distinct muscular layers and they house different muscles in each of those groups. What we can see is that each layer really plays a major role in how the foot functions. In addition to that, if we were to place back on that plantar fascia, then what we really get when we look at the plantar structures of the foot are the structures that really help maintain the integrity um, and structure and function of the foot as a whole. They help the foot kind of bear the weight, the brunt of the weight of, of a patient who is walking or ambulating. Um, and so when there is a dysfunction that arises in any of these muscles, we then kind of lose the ability to do some important things like maybe propel or like bring the foot into supination and make it a rigid lever so that we can propel. Or how about even move into a pronated position so that we can absorb some of the forces coming from the ground and distribute them up the kinetic chain. The plantar surface of the foot is instrumentally important. I don't think it gets enough credit um, for what it does. And so it's important that we dive deep and we understand all four layers of the foot and the compartments of the plantar surface of the foot um, and understand why it's such an important anatomical structure to all that we do um, as human beings. Thank you for listening to this online lecture.